Hello, my name is Liz Brown and welcome to 100 Stories Deep. Uh, today I will be reading two articles from this book here, uh, Auntie Rua Chisse, and they're by Louise Bennett. Um, I've chosen these stories, well, they're two articles really, um, because I've always been fascinated with language and the fact that I don't really have my own. Um, but Louise Bennett changes that. What she thinks is important was to get the written national tongue on the page and give it as much right and worth and weight as the English that was taught to those that came from myriad African countries, stolen from one land and placed in another, a place where they had to create their own language and make their own home. So, um, yeah, these articles are written by uh, Louise Bennett, who is a broadcaster and a writer, and uh, she always has social commentary of the day. These were from broadcasts in 1965 to 1982, um, but they could have been written now. And that's partly why I'm reading it as well, because they're still so relevant. OK, so um, the first one is called Hero Nanny. And uh, Nanny was an 18th century leader of the Maroons, the peoples that were in Jamaica when the slaves were transported across from other lands. Not everyone has been proud of their slavery heritage, uh, but Auntie Ruachi, she is. Listen now, we have one Jamaican proverb what say, if breeze na blow, you na know say that foul got skin. And larks, missus, from authority go announce Nanny as national hero. At that time, you'll get to find out how much Jamaica somebody still shame of them slavery heritage. Mm-hmm. The girl mooches, she go out. Cha! What make them a figure dig out that they were slave dopey if it on national hero? Auntie Rochi eyed them glisten with vexation and she wheel round pan mooches and holler, not doppy hero, a warrior woman. Sit down, mooches, let me tell you about her. Grandy nanny couldn't stomach slavery, hmm? She used to hate the very sound of the word slave and she take a oath and vow for use nanny town, which part she live as a refuge and backative for all runaway slaves who she could have found them way there. Hmm? But it wasn't easy to find the way there. So nanny used to send her warrior brother them by night to rescue the slave them from the plantation them. Yes, Teeth where they slave from the plantations by night. Give them safe passage. Pass nanny pass into nanny town. You can just guess how the slave owner them did vex about that. Yes, Papa. You know how much time them send soldiers and militia for attack nanny town and nanny pop them? Hmm? Nanny would have make her people them dress up themselves in a leaf and disguise up themselves like tree and bush and hide themselves back a rock and stump. And meanwhile, the attacking soldier them and march up the hill. Them would see a whole hillside a rush down upon them. Tree and bush a gallop down like a horse upon them. You can guess how the soldier them frightened. So till them all dash with them ammunition and pick up them foot under them and, and run them pepper them. History books say the soldiers were baffled and retreated in alarm. Locks, what a joke. Muches holla. Nanny pop them. Go on talk, Miss Wochi. Go on talk. Auntie Rochi say. Grandy nanny couldn't talk much English, but she could have make drum talk and she could have make horn talk. She always wear her abeng horn type on a string round her waist and she would have stand up in the head of the precipice of nanny town and fling back her head and lift up her arm and blow any message she want to her maroon people them. 
All like the day when she feel that danger that we were into Nanny Town was not secret no longer. And the soldier them was marching in. She sound the bang message to her followers and tell them to pull foot across the hills, keep to the mountains and put plenty mountain between them and this mountain and find a new hiding place. And then she start to set fire to the town and sound the bang again and say, stay free, stay free. Well, same time as Auntie Roche stopped for catch breath, one boy named Kobich come in and give out what I want. What a go on? The girl Muchi said, Miss Woodchi, I tell me about Nanny. Hear the outer other boy. Nanny Wara. Nanny Goat. And him start holler. Ba, ba. Auntie Woodchi wheel round on him and said, Not Nanny Goat, cabbage. Not Goat. Woman. A strong, fearless, Jamaican warrior woman that wouldn't buckle under slavery. Your ancestor, Kubich, that you should have proud of and stop Hala Ba Ba and Hala Talawa. Kubich said, Pop story, give me Miss Rochi. Auntie Rochi said, My grandmother tell me, say, that for her grandmother tell her, say, that nanny town and nanny and chapung nanny and more tongue nanny was the self same nanny. Mm hmm. And then storybook said that Kojo was the most daring maroon leader of the time. Everybody did know said that it was him sister nanny who was a giddy orders for swoop down upon the plantation them at night time and set fire to the cane piece them and leg the slaves them and bring them for strengthen the maroon forces them. Ah, oh. But nanny wouldn't have no part or lot with peace treaty signing. And when Kojo was determined for sign peace treaty, Kopong nanny take where herself from Pakon town and come back a partland. For Nanny said, as long as there was even one slave pan plantation, no black somebody was free. Here bitch. I saw Auntie Rochi. Auntie Rochi said, I saw. But black people never got nobody to write down for them hero deserving deeds in a book. So from generation to generation, them write it down in a them remembrance. And my grandmother tell me, say for her grandmother tell her, say that for her grandmother did tell her if he say so. That's the first of uh, Auntie Roche's little words for us today. Uh, the second one is called World Health. World Health. Um, very fitting for these times, mentions the World Health Organization, but um, Auntie Rochi is talking about a different type of world health. Listen now. You did know I said that this month of April is World Health Month. Yes, Mrs. And when my Auntie Rochi hear about the O, that is World Health Organization, you know, Auntie Rochi Hala, praises be. World find out said that him sick. Praises be. Me did know a long time said the world not healthy. For me did hear one great world lecturing gentleman say one time that violence and prejudice are the products of a sick society. So me know said that world well, well sick. What with all the word violence and word prejudice and advantage taking and martial law and murderation? What they go all over the world? Locks, missus, we're sick for true, ma. I'm mean, glad for know that word find out him poorliness and they pan a seek for get better from him sickness with him world help month. But ma, see me, massa. Auntie Roche said that it'll go take plenty longer than one month for cure the world sickness. For it is all well and good for somebody if you know said that them sick and want to get better from them sickness. That is the first step to recovery. But see worries you know. Every sickness got his own remedy. 
And when you're sick, you have to know the rightful medicine for tech. For scratch and rub, can cord, cob, cover. And plenty of people they pan a walla in a obi a man bush bar and burn black candle when a good dose of course of castor oil would have helped them. And some people they pan a try to take salt physic to wash out appendicitis out them belly when only doctor knife operation can cut that out. So, World Health Organization. Better find out a what medicine to purge out the sickness in the world. Ah oh? Auntie Brochi said that it is all well and good for some World Health Organization somebody if you talk about health in the world of tomorrow. But what happened to the world of today? The health in the world of tomorrow sort of look away like we got no hopes for the world of today. And that bad. Auntie Roach, she said, we have to cure the world of today. We must and bone find remedy for world today. And it behooves world health to realize that all them big what them are chat about, eradication of malaria and yellow fever, and creating safe water supplies, not go cure today world sickness at all at all. World Health Organization, we have to find the opposite sin thing to kubitch and grudgefulness and selfishness and fiestiness and think you betterness and bad temperness and freddy freediness and backbitingness and browbeatingness and try to counteract plenty more badness before them can cure today world sickness. So I hope that you have enjoyed the words of Louise Bennett. I hope that you have understood them. Um, I tried to read the patwa as slowly as possible to make it uh, clear to the ear that's not used to hearing it. Um, I guess two, three things that come up from uh, that, those two passages. Um, so one, what parts of our history speak to us today? Two, how will we listen to that? And three, how can we help the world's sickness? How do we move our society from illness to wellness? Thank you for listening. Uh, check down below on all the comments and check below for any more information about GAP. My name's Liz Brown. Cheers. <laughs>